Hey everyone, it's Trevor Mix, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Elecro PSP32 Color Video Display. This was sent to me for free by Elecro. Thank you very much, Nicole. So this comes with an integrated ESP32 microcontroller running at 240 megahertz with 512 megabytes of SRAM and four megabytes of onboard flash. Also includes a number of interesting ports on the back, a GPIO pin and a serial UART, which includes this little breakout connector here that you can plug into a four pin header of your choice. There's also a USB-C port that goes to that same UART, reset and boot buttons, a battery connector, a trans flash card socket, as well as a little speaker port if you wanna play some sounds. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what comes in the box. We'll hook it up to the computer and see what it takes to get some demo code running. And finally, I'm gonna talk about what project ideas I have planned coming up for this device. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what is included in the box. Okay, here's the board itself. Let's go ahead and get this opened up. Okay, so here we go. Here's the back of the board, the Wizzy ESP32. And here's the front side. This is a five inch color touchscreen display. Get rid of that plastic. Okay. So what do we have here? We've got an ESP32 over here. We've got uh, some GPIO ports, a UART. We've got a battery connector, a compact flash or trans flash. This looks like the display connector right here and this looks like the GPIO. Okay, let's put that aside for the moment. We've got a USB-A to USB-C cable, that's nice. Okay, let's put that box aside. And finally, this looks to be a acrylic laser cut case that we get to assemble. So I'll go ahead and take a look at that next. Okay, it looks like it's all nicely wrapped up here. There we go. Okay. I did not see any instructions included in the box. Oh, this looks like it's gonna be pretty simple to put together, probably no need for instructions. Yeah, this back piece is gonna go on like that. Flip that over. So let's see, how's this gonna go on? Maybe the other way around. Looks like it's probably intended to go on this way. And then the bottom piece would go on like so. All right, so let's go ahead and take uh, the plastic pieces off and screw this together. Okay, so this looks like it's maybe Phillips one. Okay, let's go ahead and drop those in. There, 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 and... Okay, I guess that's what we get. That doesn't look too bad. Kind of fitting flush there. I'll go ahead and take this off. All right. Yeah, that's a cool little form factor. I like that. Can probably put some kind of little kickstand on here so it'll sit up like that. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try hooking this up to the computer and see what we can do with it. Okay, you get a little startup animation, some model information here. So what does this do? We have a home button. It's a little weird. It seems to have buttons here, but they don't really, they don't seem to do anything. So now I click on the boot button. That's the top one. And press the reset button. Hmm. Now we're getting a demo. Okay, so let's see. Can we click on these buttons now? Okay, touchscreen's working. We have a little slider. This kind of looks like the YouTube analytics page. We have our uh, unique visitors, our monthly revenue. Yeah, I wish. Okay, that's cool. Oh, there's a little on-screen keyboard so we can type in our name. Trevor Makes. Right. It's kind of hard to see it, but there's uh, some little disabled controls down here. Uh, very accurately, the hardworking and team player toggles are set to off. That's um, how did they know? 
So the Elecro website has a link to this wiki page, which is specifically for this five inch display. So there's a little description paragraph that talks about the things that you can use the display for and some links to a few different tutorials for the Arduino IDE, for Platform IO, for the IDF, and for this Square Line Studio that looks kind of interesting, as well as some links to sample code and things that you can download. So first let's take a look at the Arduino tutorial. So this tutorial seems to be for the Arduino 1 IDE. I'm actually gonna be using the Arduino 2 IDE. We'll see if there's any issues with that. Download the libraries provided by Elecro, okay. So let's go ahead and download that. Copy them into the library folder in the Arduino installation directory. Okay, put this into libraries, extract it. Oh, okay, so actually that was a zip archive. So we have here 5.0 factory program and Arduino libraries.zip. So what's included in this Arduino libraries.zip? Uh, libraries. So what do we have here? The UI libraries for the six displays. Okay, so I think we want this one, right? UI helpers. Huh. Libraries. So I'm just going to copy all of these over and I'll copy this UI folder, a newer item named UI already exists. All right, we'll just, uh, we'll replace the one that was in there with the one from the UI 5.0 blue folder. And there's this user setup uh, that didn't seem to apply here. There's also this tutorial. After downloading the Arduino IDE, click on file preference. Let's say copy. So we wanna go to settings, board manager, here we go. Okay. Tools board, board manager, search for ESP32. It is recommended to install version 2.0.3. ESP32 by Espressif Systems. Is that the one we want? Okay. I'm gonna go back to the wiki page here. Board settings, under the tools menu, see the development board in select ESP32 S3. Okay, so let's check that out. Tools board ESP32, ESP32 S3 dev module. See the partition scheme and select huge app. Okay, so we're gonna select huge. See PS RAM and select OPI PS RAM. Okay. Anyway, check command, command, read. Okay, so this is the exact same error, it looks like. Aha, well, here we go. This is bad. Presumably this is good. Let's try the hello world sketch. Okay, it seems to be working now. So let's go ahead and, okay, so we have to hold boot and reset together and then release reset and then boot. And then in the serial monitor, we get this waiting for download message. Upload. Let's see what happens this time. And it's uploading. Okay. This hard resetting via the RTS pin, this doesn't seem to be working over USB. So yeah, I guess we just have to manually reset the board here. Okay. And it just says, hello world. Okay. We're good to go. Okay. About all I can... <laughs> I don't have any more mental bandwidth for messing around with this tonight. So I'm just gonna make it say Trevor makes and I'm gonna set the text size to, let's make it five. Uh, now do the same thing again. So let's go back here, hit the reset button and there we go, Trevor makes. Okay, cool.
Next time I work with this display, I'm gonna try Platform IO instead. I usually prefer working with Platform IO. That should hopefully make the library management a little easier. Yikes. Yeah, I'll take a look at that next time. Okay, so my initial impressions of the board are the demo is pretty responsive, the touch screen worked pretty well, the quality of the graphics on the display looked pretty good, the colors look nice. I'm sure I'm gonna be able to do some interesting things with this board later on, but getting the Arduino IDE set up to work with it initially was a bit of a pain. I did have some stumbling points with the library setup, needing to install very particular versions of the libraries and the boards, but I guess that's kind of typical for Arduino stuff. I'm hoping that next time I work with the board using platform IO, some of that library management is going to just work a little better. So clearly I'm gonna to need to do a lot more reading up on LVGL library, the graphics library. Uh, hopefully that's gonna be the key to figuring out how to draw some interesting graphics and things on the display. So as for future projects, I can see this being very useful in the future anytime I need a touchscreen GUI for Wi-Fi connected IoT devices. But the very first project that I'd like to work on, which was actually why I was so excited to receive this device in the first place, is to use it as a serial UART terminal for my other Arduino projects. And in particular, I'd like to use it with my Z80 breadboard computer and maybe use the built-in Bluetooth to connect to a Bluetooth keyboard so that I can type in commands and see the result printed out here on the display. And maybe use the built-in trans flash as a program storage, and then maybe even work up to implementing something like the remote imaging protocol so I can send some simple vector graphics and have them printed out on this nice color display, all without needing to connect to some other dedicated computer. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and all that YouTube stuff. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.